Hello and welcome back to the Future Doc channel. And as you can see, today I have some company. Say hi, Daniela. So Daniela is one of the Future Doc team and someone who you'll be getting to know fairly well on the channel as she'll be doing a lot of videos to help you with your medical and dental school application. So today, to help you get to know Daniela a little bit better and as a bit of an introduction to the channel, we're going to talk about how Daniela went from a successful career in London to then transitioning into a grad medicine course, which she's almost through now, and the kind of mental challenges of going in as a grad. Sometimes people struggle with age. They have a certain cutoff that they believe that beyond which you shouldn't apply and kind of understanding the psychology and how we think about those dilemmas and whether to apply and really how to maximize our chances if we do decide to go ahead with it. I think your story is really interesting because you were, you know, you had a good career and you were like absolutely bossing it in London. And then, you know, at a certain age, you decided, okay, I'm really going to go for it now. And I get this all the time with, with people who are applying that they think, oh, I'm 28 or I'm 32 or whatever it is. And I can't apply now because it's, it's for some reason, there's a deadline apparently that people beyond which people expire and they're not allowed to apply. So what, what would that talk me through kind of like the mind for set of going through having something really good, having a great career, uh, Daniela was working for Apple and then kind of deciding to leave that behind and doing that at an age as ridiculous as it is an age where people think that it's not possible and how you made that decision. So medicine was always my dream and I knew that that was what I wanted to go into. But then when I graduated from biomedical science and I applied and I didn't get in, I was so devastated and I thought, okay, it's just not meant to be. It's just something I'm never going to achieve. And that's when I went full-time working for Apple. And that was a great experience for me because I learned so much about myself. I learned what working life was like. I was making a salary, which was great. I had some income. Um, but the whole time I felt quite unfulfilled and I knew this isn't what I wanted to do. Um, and as time went on, I worked there for quite a while. I just kept thinking that I still want to become a doctor. I still want to do it. And obviously by then I was maybe 24, 25. And I just thought it's too late for me. I can't do it. But I just thought I'm going to be 35, 40, 45 anyway. And when I get to that age and I look back, if I haven't applied for medicine, I'm going to regret it because I knew I hadn't put all of my effort into my previous application. I thought to myself, I need to apply again and I really need to give it my best shot so that if I don't get in, at least in 10, 20 years time, I can look back and think, okay, well, I know I gave it my best shot and it just didn't work out. So that was kind of my mindset and my thinking behind it. Um, and then obviously when I did really prepare and do everything that I could for my application, that was when I got the offer. Mm. So might as well be 35 and be a doctor. <laughs> yeah. I mean, not be a doctor. Yeah, exactly. It's something that I see all of the time though with students that I meet that they often think, you know, I'm 23 and it's way too late for me. That is just not true. I'm such an advocate for people who are in a similar position. If you're passionate about it and if you know is what you want to do, it is not too late. And especially now on my course, there are people who are over 30. There are people who have been working as lawyers or, you know, did history as a degree or come from very different backgrounds or people who have two, three children and they're still making it through graduate entry yeah. medicine, which is amazing. It's so inspiring. So if that's you and you're passionate about it, I just cannot recommend that you go for it enough. Tell us about your experience and what prompted you to go down the medicine, the grad medicine route? So I always wanted to be a doctor actually, but I didn't get the grades that I needed at A-level. So I did uh, biomedical science instead. When I graduated, the year that I graduated, I decided to apply for graduate entry medicine, but I rushed the application. It was really poor and unsurprisingly got no interviews and no offers. So I worked in something completely different and the whole time I knew I still want to become a doctor. So I decided to really put effort into the application and applied for graduate entry medicine a second time and I got in and that's, yeah. that's where I am now. Yeah, cool. And so if you had to put kind of 
a key difference or maybe a few things that made the difference between you know success and failure with the application what do you think probably you'd put it down to i definitely think that students underestimate how difficult the application process is and how much preparation you need to do um the big difference for me was really putting a lot of effort and preparing as much as i could the second time around as opposed to the first time around i just thought you know, the UCAT, it can't be that hard. I've written a personal statement before. I've done a degree. Surely I'll get in. But actually, that is just not enough. That's the bare minimum. You really need to be focusing on your work experience, your personal statement, making sure that you score as highly in the entrance exams as you possibly can, because that's what's going to make you stand out from every other applicant. So definitely taking the time to prepare properly made a big difference for me. Mm. And Daniela's in charge of all of the grad applicants at Future Dark. And actually, you know, we see it all the time. People come to us who didn't get in maybe once, twice. We've had up to, you know, five times people have not got in by themselves and then come to us for a little bit of help. And we can instantly see straight away the mistakes that they're making, the underest how much they're underestimating the application and why that's affecting them. So Daniela, as someone who deals exclusively with the grads, tell me, what would you say some big mistakes that you see people make are or some big oversights that they make potentially again it just comes down to preparation um not preparing wisely and appropriately for either the ucal or the gamsa or whichever entrance exam you're sitting um and i think strategically applying to medical schools is really important as well and that's something that we work with with all of our students because if you're applying to any medical course you want to maximize your chances of getting in. So by choosing the right universities and the right schools for you, statistically, you are increasing your chances of getting in. So I think that's something that students don't really pay too much attention to. Mm. What I guess one big tip that I always say to students is to sit the gamsat because you have to think about some of the things that, you know, are specific to your situation. And, and that, again, that's, Kind of one of the reasons that the, the program does so well is that, you know, we look at each individual person and what they should do for their circumstances. I think when you take blanket advice, especially for grad, it's, it doesn't apply necessarily to that person. And it's, the, it's so nuanced that it's those little details that make the difference. But one of the things that I always say is, you know, you've got to bear in mind, are you, a good, can you finance the, the course if you get on the four year course? Because if you, if you can't finance the four-year course, you certainly will struggle to finance the five-year course where you won't get any support typically for most people. Now, if you're going down the four-year course, then you have a set number of universities available to you. Well, if you do the GAMSAT, then you've got pretty much, not quite, but pretty much that same number again. So by doing those two exams, you're doubling your chances. And that makes a massive difference. And these are just, again, a number of things that we need to consider. But... In my experience now, the thing that I have understood is that it's all those little things that cumulatively add up and they kind of make up more than the sum of their parts. And that's when, when you're on that curve, that normal distribution curve of applicants and the quality, you only have to be that little bit better to make the threshold between, you know, some of the top 5% of applicants versus everybody else. So it really is about all the marginal gains to borrow a term from athletics but all those little things that add up and make up the difference between somebody who is an outstanding applicant and someone's just kind of your bog standard good applicant 